Brachial plexus examination starts off with inspection. So we first look at the face for any signs of Horner's syndrome. Look at the eyes, look for any ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, and, and ophthalmos. We then move down to the neck and look for any bruising or fullness in the supraclavicular fossa, which could indicate hematoma or edema from trauma. Look at the clavicle for any fractures or deformities there. And then at the shoulder for the shape of the deltoid for any wasting, which could indicate damage to the axillary nerve. We then look for any droop in the shoulder, which could be damage to the spinal accessory nerve, which is one of our donors. And then lastly, look at the attitude of the upper limb. If it's internally rotated, it might be damage to the upper plexus, or if it's in an intrinsic minus position, it might be damage to the lower plexus. Inspection from the back starts off with looking at the attitude of the shoulder, again for any wasting of the deltoid or droop of the shoulder. Look for any scars, which could be surgical scars from nerve transfers for the brachial plexus and then look at the scapula for any obvious ringing. You can also look at the supraspinatus and infraspinatus fossas for any wasting in these muscles which would indicate damage to the suprascapular nerve. We start physical examination from the back. First thing we want to test is the trapezius muscle because it is one of our donors. You do this by asking the patient to shrug their shoulders while providing some resistance. Can you just shrug your shoulders for me? Stop me from pushing you down. That's good. And do that while feeling the actual levator scapula and the trapezius muscles between your fingers there. And relax for me. The next muscle you want to test is the rhomboid muscle. This is innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, which is the first branch coming off the roots. You can get the patient to pinch their shoulder blades in together. You just pinch your shoulder blades in together for me, and you can palpate the rhomboid muscle at the same time and observe the contraction there. The next test is to test the long thoracic nerve. Classically in the books, the test for this is to push your hands flat against the wall. Typically, brachial plexus patients aren't able to do this because they have weakness in the plexus in their shoulders. So a modification and a more appropriate test would be to get the patient to lift your arm and just rest their arm on yours with their shoulders flexed and tell them to push forward against your hand. So just push forward, punch forward against my hand there while feeling the scapula for any elevation or winging. The next step, step four, is to examine the C5 nerve root. And this is examining the shoulder girdle muscles. So we can do this, especially for the exams, in one slick motion where you examine the sequence of four muscles at the same time. So the first one we're going to examine is the infraspinatus muscle. So can I just get you to keep your elbows against your waist and bring your arm out. I want you to move your arm out this way for me against my hand. And you're testing external rotation. At the same time, feel and palpate the infraspinatus muscle, which is just under the spine of the scapula. From here, bring the patient's arm up. I just want you to turn downwards as though you're emptying a can of drink. Now push upwards against my hand. And in this way, you're now examining the supraspinatus muscle and just palpate just above the spine of the scapula. From this position, bring the arm up and just flex your elbow for me. I just want you to lift your arm up for me and stop me from pushing it down. And this you're examining the deltoid now and just palpate the deltoid. From here, what I want you to do is move your arm up this way. Now here you're examining the teres minor, it's external rotation and abduction in the abducted position. So just do that for me against my hand. Yep, stop me from pushing you down and just palpate the teres minor at the same time. Step five is to examine the pectoral muscles and the latissimus dorsi. So what you have to do is get the patient to hold their waist. Could you just hold your waist for me and just push down into your waist? Now here you can palpate both the latissimus dorsi muscle, which is on the posterior axillary fold, and the pec major, which is on the anterior axillary fold. Once you've done that, you're testing both muscles. Just press in for me, that's great. And then if you want to test the clavicular head of the pec major, just get the patient to bring your, can you just get to bring your hand to the opposite shoulder and just press in there for me? And just feel right under the clavicle and you can feel the clavicular head of the pectoralis major muscle. So step six is to examine the myotomes. Now we've already examined the C5 myotome, which is the deltoid. We now move on to C6, which is biceps. So just get the patient to do a biceps curl. Can you just move your arm up for me? I just want you to do a biceps curl in towards that way for me. So pull against my hand, yep. At the same time, palpate the biceps muscle for contraction. Now what I want you to do is push my hand away from me, get the patient then to extend the elbow, 
push, push away from me, and then palpate the triceps. You can also examine C6 and C7 by getting the patient to flex and extend the wrist against resistance and supinate and pronate. Step eight is then to examine the C8 and T1 myotomes. So what I want you to do is hold your hand out for me. And C8 is basically finger flexion. Can I just squeeze my fingers as hard as you can? C8 nerve root is tested by asking the patient to grip your finger as hard as they can, testing the FTPs. And the T1 nerve root is testing the intrinsics, asking the patient to spread the finger against resistance. The last step of step eight is to examine the sensory dermatomes. So first compare with normal. So is this normal for you? Yes. Yep. And this is 10 out of 10. Let me know what you feel on the other side. So we start off with C4, which is over the shoulder. Can you feel that? Yes. Is that 10 out of 10? Yes. Yep. And then the lateral elbow is C5. 10. 10, yep. And then the thumb is C6. 10. And then middle finger, C7. 10. Little finger, C8. 10. And then inner arm or medial elbow is T1. 10. And then your T2 is medial arm. 10. And that's supplied by the intercostal brachial nerve. It's not part of the plexus, but just um, completes the sensory examination. We also need to do a Tinel's examination. So a Tinel's is where you tap over the nerve and you get pins and needles or electricity, um, electric shocks going down your arm. So I'm just going to tap on you on your neck. Let me know if you feel any pain or electric shocks or pins and needles. Anything? No. no. You complete your examination by also examining for reflexes and for any clonus, which would indicate signs of upper motor neuron injury.